Look, it's a crazy time right now, and odds are if you're watching this, you're probably stuck at home trying to keep yourself from going totally stir crazy. And by this point, you've probably mastered baking bread, making that fancy fluffy Dalgona coffee stuff, and you've probably watched Tiger King and more Netflix than you ever thought possible. So what better time to learn a new skill than now? And I might be biased, but I think there's no better skill to learn than how to suture. So, Today is gonna to be the first video in a new series teaching you everything you need to know about suturing. And also, before we get started, I've linked up some suture kits below that you can find on Amazon. I haven't personally tried any of these because I use my own instruments, but I went by the ratings and picked a couple that have the most stars. So if you're looking for some supplies to get started, uh, hopefully these will be a good uh, starting off point. So let's dive in. So the first thing we're gonna need is our instruments. And what I have here is a needle driver. Now the proper way to hold the needle driver is with the tip of the thumb just partway into that loop, and then the tip of your fourth finger into the other loop. You don't wanna hold it like a pair of scissors, like that, or definitely not like that. This way, by holding it gently in your thumb and fourth finger, you have enough control over it, but it's loose enough that it's easy to maneuver and move around and let go when you need to. In the back here, you see these locking teeth that lets you lock onto something like the needle and hold it in place. So this is your needle driver. The next thing that you'll use is a forceps. This is what you use to hold the edge of the tissue. Now this particular one is called an Adson forceps, and we use this to evert skin tissue edges. You'll need some kind of suture scissor. It's not very important what type it is as long as it's a scissor that's big enough for the type of suture that you're cu cutting. And then of course you'll need your suture. Now I already have the needle out of the packet, um, but this is what's called a monofilament suture. And we'll talk more about sutures in later videos, but for now what's useful to keep in mind is that a monofilament suture is a single piece of material as opposed to other sutures which are braided suture. And we like to think of single piece material or monofilament as the suture that's less likely to become infected because it doesn't have all those nooks and crannies that bacteria could uh, work their way into. So the first thing to keep in mind is the proper way to pick up the needle with the needle driver. Now you wanna always be grabbing this about two thirds of the way back on the needle and at about a 15 degree angle. And here you can see that 15 degree angle right there. Now it's important because if you grab too far back on the needle, you have too much wrist movement that you'll have to carry out to pass that needle through the tissue. But if you grab the needle too far to the tip, then you can't get the whole needle through the tissue without letting go and re-grabbing, and that's not very efficient. So this is the best place to grab it. Now, as we'll see when we suture, what we do is we grab the skin edge, we pass the needle through, bring it up to the middle, and then cross over to the other side. Now, depending on the suture and the incision and what you're doing, you might be able to take it all on what we call one bite without having to come up through the middle. Now, when you bring it through, you're gonna leave a little bit of a tail that we're gonna instrument tie to. Now, I'll show you guys how to do hand ties in other videos, but for this one, we're just gonna use our needle driver. So we're gonna carry uh, two loops on the needle driver here. We're gonna cross our hands so that that knot comes down square, or what we call flat. Then we'll let go. Pull it in the other direction. And then we're gonna keep alternating. When you're done, you're gonna cut the suture, making sure to leave enough of a tail. Now, if you wanna learn how to do other procedures, click the link on the screen right now and you'll learn about how to do a tracheostomy. In the future, as I publish more videos on suturing, there'll be a link on the screen for the next video also. And again, just to recap, today we learned how to do simple interrupted suture. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.